We're just about three quarters of the way through the 2022 Nippon Professional Baseball League season, so I thought now would be a good time to ask you, the viewers, to comment any questions, reactions, hot takes, etc. about MPB right now for me to talk about. Sorry I can't get to all of them, but thank you all for the continued support. Leading us off today, what is the best fit for Yoshi Tsutsugo? So Tsutsugo was designated for assignment by the Pittsburgh Pirates earlier this month, effectively ending his two and a half year stint in Major League Baseball. He posted a 9-10 OPS and 146 weighted runs created plus over his career with the Yokohama DNA Bay Stars, but was unable to translate his success to the majors and his negative 1.7 baseball reference war in 2022 actually ranked dead last in all of MLB. So I think most people thought that would be the end of his MLB days, but he actually signed a minor league deal with the Toronto Blue Jays this week, so maybe he has one last chance. But realistically, unless he lights the world on fire, he's going to be heading back to Japan this offseason. Shogo Akiyama went over to MLB the same year as Tsutsugo, but already returned to Japan this July after his unsuccessful tenure. And Akiyama has done very well so far, so while it isn't a guarantee that Tsutsugo will be the same player he was before leaving, if he's any semblance of himself, then he'll be an extremely valuable asset for any team looking for a stable source of power from the left side, which should be just about every team. And at this point, he profiles almost exclusively as a first baseman slash DH, but he can still play third base and corner outfield in a pinch, and I think he can still post 25 to 30 bombs a year with a pretty extreme 3 true outcome sort of approach. So if Tsutsugo does in fact return to Japan next year, the most obvious fit would be a return to Yokohama, but I think Hanshin, SoftBank, Oryx, and Rakuten would all be good fits too, especially the Pacific League teams since he'd be able to DH. Next comment, hot take, no single player is more valuable to their team than Yusuke Oyama. When he was struggling to start 2022, the Tigers were awful. When he was red hot, the Tigers climbed out of the cellar into second place, and with him out with COVID now, they're back to looking terrible. I think you can definitely make the case that Oyama is one of the biggest difference makers in the league right now. He has 22 home runs with a 148 WRC plus on the year, and his Tigers are 14-4-1 in games which he homers. Apart from the shortened 2020 season, which was by far Oyama's best year, this has been the best we've ever seen Oyama hit. He's hitting the ball harder than he ever has, and he's walking over 11% of the time, a big improvement from his career average coming into the year below 8%. And for a Tigers team that really lacks pop, Oyama has really been the only guy that's reliably hit for some power apart from Teruaki Sato. The Tigers lineup just isn't the same without him. And that takes me to the next comment, while it's a foregone conclusion that the Dragons won't make the playoffs, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the Tigers won't either. Their hitting is just not balanced enough, and Adderlin Rodriguez is not the guy. So in my preseason predictions, I had Hanshin finishing in 4th for the season. Last year they had Oyama, Sato, Jerry Sands, and Jeffrey Marte all hitting 20 plus jacks, but they let Sands go and Marte has been a complete non-factor for them all year. Now, Mel Rojas Jr. is finally starting to get hot, but overall, this team is just incredibly shallow in the power department. They lead the league in steals, so they are piecing things together with some small ball, but there's just no way this lineup can compete with the likes of Yakult, Yomiuri, or DNA. They're getting zero offensive production out of catcher, second base, left field, and there just isn't enough depth here overall. Now the pitching is elite, it's the best in the league by a mile right now, so with the diluted Central League field, it isn't totally out of the question that the arms just carry them to a playoff spot, but I just don't see it right now. Still, I doubted them before when they started the season 4-20, so you never know. Next up, the resurgence of the DNA Base Stars has put them firmly in second. They're combining timely small ball with consistent big swings. Shota Imanaga seems to have rediscovered what made him a great pitcher before the pandemic. So yeah, the Bay Stars are playing amazing right now in the second half. They finished dead last last year, but I predicted they would make the playoffs this year mainly because of that loaded lineup, but also because I was banking on the pitching staff to improve. But I sure didn't expect the pitching staff to get this good all of a sudden. In fact, it's been more so the pitching that's put them in this position than the hitting this year, which I never would have thought was possible. 
Now, to me, Imanaga has always had the stuff to be a true ace, so it was more about what the guys around him can do. And so far, Shinichi Onuki and Haruhiro Hamaguchi have been able to complement Imanaga perfectly in that rotation, as those three have combined for an excellent 2.59 ERA over 275 innings. After the front three, it does get a bit rough because Fernando Romero, Taiga Kami Chitani, Katsuki Azuma, Yuya Sakamoto, and Kenta Ishida are not really the kind of guys you can trust to take the mound week in and week out, but their bullpen does have the second best ERA and strikeout rate in the Central League, so they've been able to patch things together even when the starters falter. Yasuaki Yamasaki, Edwin Escobar, and Hiromu Issei all have sub-2 ERAs, and there's some solid reinforcements coming soon with Kazuki Mishima and Robert Gazelman. Now as for the hitting, they have three of the top 10 hitters in the league by WRC Plus with Keita Sano, Chugo Maki, and Toshiro Miyazaki. Plus, Tyler Austin finally made his much anticipated season debut this month, though he is out again with COVID. So once he's fully integrated back into the team, this lineup is going to pack a serious punch. Alrighty, switching gears to the Pacific League, Oryx will surprise in the postseason, reaching the Japan Series for the second year in a row. The bats are alive, the pitching is getting better, and they have a reliable 1-2-3 in Yoshinobu Yamamoto, Taisuke Yamaoka, and Hiroya Miyagi with a strong 4 in Daiki Tajima. They just need to keep winning 2 out of 3 in key matchups against Rakuten and Softbank. Definitely easier said than done, but the Buffaloes are my current pick to win the pennant, and I totally agree that they're the best suited for the playoffs out of the Pacific if they can just manage to get out of this really tight race. Their team WRC Plus is 104, ranking them third, well ahead of the Lions in fourth, and their team fielding independent pitching minus is 92, ranking them second, just behind the Lions in first. So they hit slightly better than league average and pitch way better than league average. That's a pretty good formula for success. Now, they are a weak defensive unit, but I don't think that's going to punish them as much as it may other teams because their pitchers have the best strikeout rate minus walk rate in the league at 15.3%. The pitching staff is just stacked. You do not want to go up against their big three in a short postseason series, especially when their rotation is so deep that it's going to enable some of the guys in the back end to move into the bullpen to shore up the late innings. In fact, they've already experimented with letting guys like Sachi Yamasaki, Jacob Waggispak, and Jesse Biddle swing between the rotation and pen throughout the season. As for the offense, they've got a solid heart of the order with Masataka Yoshida, the best pure hitter in all of Japan, having another monster season with a 188 WRC+, alongside last year's home run king Yutaro Sugimoto, sporting a solid 125 WRC+, and youngster Keita Nakagawa having a breakout season with a 132 WRC+. And then there's role players like Yuma Mune, Shuhei Fukuda, Roichi Adachi, and Joe McCarthy. They aren't world beaters by any stretch of the imagination, but they're solid contributors that are all hitting above league average right now. So I totally think the Buffaloes are legit. You don't just fluke your way to the pennant. And they're doing exactly what you're supposed to do right now. Beat up the bottom feeders as they're a combined 24 and 14 against the Marines and fighters. Which brings me to the next question. Can any Pacific League team really compete with Yakult or is this just a tight race to be the team granted the honor of losing to the Swallows? Well, I actually think plenty of Pacific League teams have a shot to win it all this year, and we have to remember, the Swallows will almost certainly win the regular season pennant, but there's no guarantee that they're going to make the Japan Series either. You still have to play the Climax Series. Admittedly, the Swallows are by far the most complete team in all of MPB, and I wouldn't bet against them losing, but I think the Buffaloes and maybe even the Lions have the pitching to shut down that elite Swallows lineup in a short postseason series. It's obviously going to be awfully difficult to navigate a lineup consisting of Munetaka Murakami, Tetsuto Yamada, and Domingo Santana, among others, but if anyone can do it, it's probably Oryx. And on the other side of the spectrum, I think the Hawks and Eagles have the hitting to expose the Swallows' lack of rotational depth. Apart from Keiji Takahashi and the top-tier relievers, Yakult's pitching is pretty flawed. So again, would I bet against the Swallows winning it all this year? No, but they've really struggled in the second half. This just isn't the same super team from the first half, so I think any of those four teams I named have a potential for an upset victory in the Japan Series. Okay, now let's end things with a few rapid-fire questions. Does Munetaka Murakami wear number 55 in honor of a certain Yankee legend? And what's left for Murakami to prove in Japan? 
Well, he acknowledges that 55 is Hideki Matsui's number, but he does say that he wants to build his own legacy, so that 55 becomes known as Murakami's number rather than just Matsui's number. And there's still plenty for Murakami to accomplish in Japan. It's crazy to think about, but he is on pace to be the best home run hitter in Japanese baseball history. I mean, he almost has 150 bombs before turning 23. So Murakami has said that he does have MLB aspirations, and MLB teams are definitely scouting him extensively right now, but you're probably not going to see him in a different uniform until 2026 at the earliest. Why does an MPB increase the regular season schedule from 143 to say 148 or 152 games? Well, the MPB schedule has been longer in the past, but right now this format makes sense. You play every team in your league 25 times for a total of 125, and then you play 18 interleague games for a total of 143. And MPB already starts their spring training much earlier than MLB, so I think the 143 game format is actually fine. And personally, I actually think the 162 game MLB grind is a bit too taxing on the players. And finally, what's the possibility of the Giants ousting Tatsunori Hara at the end of the season in favor of someone like Abe or Ochiai? Well, Hara just signed a new three-year contract last offseason, and that was after the team almost completely collapsed in the second half and nearly missed the playoffs. So I feel like the Giants are just not that keen on rocking the boat. But if the Giants squander yet another great start this year, then I think the front office has to start thinking about a change in the managership. There's so much money and so much talent on this roster that there's just no excuse for not making the playoffs at the very least. And Hara's brand of small ball really continues to baffle me. If you're going to construct your team to live and die by the long ball, you need to actually put yourself in the best position to do that. And it just makes me shake my head every time I see Hara put down a bunt sign for a guy like Yoshihiro Maru, who is one of the best hitters in the entire league. And his bullpen management is also not very good, in my opinion. Alrighty, that just about does it for today's installment of Cosmo Comments. Special thanks to my patrons, Chris J, Jonathan Greenberg, Hinosato Yaku, Poker Packrat, Corgi Racing, Anthony Payne, Jake Royce, Marcus Hill, Yua Bird, Ryan Fox, Jeff W, Char Aznable, Juan Jose Sanchez Bracamontes, Christopher Woods, Samantha Garavay, Yuki Submarine, Kud, Jem Morelos, Gabriel Foss, Kurt Berglund, Eduardo Granados, Kotaro Imahayashi Kim, J1, Tom Musa, Mike Braun, Lucas Bora, Stu22, Alex Irish, Marty Mercari, PB Cal98, Tokyo Kyojin Fan, and Dave Hackerson. If you'd like to become a patron yourself, please check out patreon.com slash baseballcosmo. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more MPB content in English.